Hey y'all, so today um, we're gonna go ahead and replace the ignition coils on this 2020 um, Ford Expedition. It has the 3.5 liter EcoBoost motor. Um, car's been pretty reliable. It's been pretty decent. It's got 70K on it now. Um, we use this thing pretty much for, you know, just basically hauling family around, running errands, throwing dirty, you know, sports equipment in the back for the kids. Um, it's great, not really had a problem with it. Um, Small little things. We've changed the plugs, I think, at like um, 60K. I don't, I don't know that that was really recommended um, by Ford in the manual, but we did it anyway just because 60K seems like a long time for plugs if you're going to run it. I mean, well, if you run it to 100K, that's, I think that's what they recommend, and uh, that's a little too long in my opinion. Um, so I replaced the plugs. Plugs are good. Um, and then we were driving it uh, about a month ago, and it started to stutter on acceleration when I tried to pass somebody on a back road and when I had my foot in it. And <laughs> as you can imagine, that can be extremely dangerous if you're trying to pass somebody and there's oncoming traffic coming. So got home, uh, hooked up the same scan tool that I have um, that I used on the Maserati, for example. Um, this one right here, the Foxwell. Um, and it has generic OBD2 um, capabilities so that it can go ahead and recodes. And it gave me a uh, misfire in cylinder three. Cylinder three, at least on this motor, I believe, is on the back uh, passenger side. It's, at the, it's the furthest one at the back uh, when you're looking at the motor from the front of the car. Um, I took the coil out, um, didn't look weird, nothing looked pro you know, problematic, plugs were all tight and everything. Took that coil and moved it over to the front cylinder, to cylinder one, the very most front one on the passenger side bank when you're looking at the front of the truck or car. Um, after doing that, it was fine for a little bit, and then I went ahead and tried it again, you know, stepping on it here or there, and ran into the same problem. Uh, after running into the same problem, it um, I hooked the scan tool up, and now it's showing that it's coming from uh, the same bank, but now cylinder one. So the problem's moved, which that's a trick that's as old as time, you know, for people that, you know, work in cars. It's you can tell if the coil's bad by doing that. Obviously the problem moves, right? When you replace the coils though, you can't just replace one. Uh, or, well, let me rephrase that. You can just replace one. Should you replace only one? No, you should probably replace the whole set because at any given point in time, you're gonna have another one fail and then another one and then another one. So ultimately we have a whole new set of coils and that's just what we're gonna do. We're gonna replace all of those today and we're gonna go ahead and rescan and clear the codes and then see what happens. Okay, so all you really need to get this job done, quarter inch drive ratchet, little extension, quarter inch drive extension, 10 millimeter and an eight millimeter socket. Probably deep sockets, um, at least, uh, yeah, probably just go with deep sockets because the two front bolts here to pull this cover off, uh, you might need a deep socket for that. Um, for the coils themselves, you don't. You could use a shallow socket, it's no big deal. Um, as you can see, pretty straightforward process though. Um, Let's try it out.
Okay, so we finished it up, pretty easy job. Um, at the end of the day, if you're not handy with tools, it's really not a difficult job. Really the biggest thing you gotta watch for is, you know, there's a couple little plastic pipes and hoses. You just don't want to crack any of those or disturb them enough that there's gonna be a problem. Um, it's really straightforward. Like I said, there, you can't really screw up much. Um, so if you're, if you're worried about going to the shop and paying like, oh, it's like $900, $800, whatever the case is that a dealer or repair shop tells you, you can literally buy these coils for 380 or so dollars off of rockauto.com and they are motorcraft. So they are their OEM coils. So um, if you run into a problem, don't be afraid to tackle it yourself. It's really not hard. Uh, that probably took me 15 minutes at best, maybe 20. You know, um, the only things I could say to watch out for maybe is when you're pulling the clips off the coils, they slide back and, and they kind of unlock and then you can squeeze them and pull them off. Just make sure that when you put the clips back on that you slide them all the way back on and push those white clips all the way back on and it, you'll, you'll hear the click. It takes a little bit of force to do it, um, but otherwise that's it.